I'll do as many takes of this as you want. Hi, my name's Helen and I'm a chef tutor here at the Waitrose and Partners Cookery School. Today I'm going to show you how to make a chocolate and orange tart. I can hardly think of a more iconic pairing. There are quite a few elements, but I'm going to take you through it step by step. I think the result is actually quite a showstopper. So we're making a short crust pastry today. So I've got in my bowl 180 grams of plain flour. To this I'm going to add a pinch of salt. So I'm just going to give that a quick mix through. And then into this we can add 100 grams of butter, which is nice and cold and already cubed up. If you'd like the full recipe, the link is in the description. You really just want to initially work through all of that butter just to break it down into nice flat pieces. So I'm now going to start going through and shuffling it into the flour. So rubbing it between my thumb and forefingers, just going for a consistency that's kind of like fine breadcrumbs. We're using just the yolk of the egg today. And then into this, I'm going to add a tablespoon of water, uh, nice and cold as well. And then you just want to use a blunt knife, so a butter knife, to mix that through together and then quickly kind of cut and stir it into the dough. And then once you've got it all dispersed, you can get your hands in there and start trying to bring it together. And just kind of squeeze it all into one ball. So once it's come together, you can pop it onto the work surface and that's when we're going to start to knead it. Now we just want to be quite brisk with this, so just folding it in on itself a few times. So what we really don't want is to overwork the dough. You can see that it should come together and be nice and smooth. So just form it into a nice ball shape. We just need to wrap it up now. So this can go into the fridge now to chill for about 20 minutes and then it'll be ready to roll. So now my pastry has chilled for about 20 minutes. It's nice and cold. I'm going to get this onto a nicely dusted work surface. And then I always like to start, because we've got it in the right shape to begin with, I always like to start by kind of pinning it out ever so slightly. Because it's such a short dough, it's not going to be very elastic. So it can help to kind of encourage it into the right shape. And then we're just going to start rolling from top to bottom. And every few rolls, we'll do a kind of quarter turn just to try and keep it as round as possible. And what we're going for is just slightly less than half a centimetre in thickness, and then we can grab our tin ready to line. So just to see if it's big enough, you can line it up with the edges, you just need to make sure that it reaches the top of the tin. And so from here, we'll gently get our hands underneath it and just pop it straight in there. So you want to lift it and then just ease it down into the edges of the tin. And then we're going to grab a knife and just trim off that excess dough. So once you've got the excess trimmed, you can then use your fingers to just kind of squeeze it up against the tin ever so slightly. You want to raise the pastry to just higher than the level of the tin. I'm going to dock the pastry, so basically just making small holes in the bottom of it with a fork. And that will allow any steam to escape so we can keep a nice flat bottom to our tart. We can grab a piece of baking parchment and to make sure that it sits really, really flush, I would like to scrumple it up first and that way it will soften the paper and it will go into all of the edges without tearing the pastry. We can now add in our baking beans. I've got a mixture here of rice and lentils, um, but it's really just to weigh the pastry down and allow it to cook nice and evenly. So now the pastry is ready to go into the oven. We're going to get it in for the first 18 minutes with the beans. And then after that time, we'll take them out and bake it for another 10 or 12 minutes just to finish off coloring the pastry. So while the tart is baking, we can start to make the orange curd. So for this, we're going to use the juice and the zest of the oranges. But before we get started, I'm actually going to pare down half of the zest of one of these oranges so I can use it as a garnish. We can literally just line them up on top of each other and take a knife and run through them to create nice, fine pieces. And then this can just go into the fridge until we need it later on. We're going to zest the remaining oranges straight into the pan. Those can be used for our curd. I always like to zest straight into the pan or the bowl, whatever it is, because you get loads and loads of essential oils from your citrus fruits, and that's where all the flavor is, really. And then we can start with the juice. So I'll start off with two of my oranges. And we're looking for 120 mils today. That's 120 grams if you're using a set of scales. Into this, we're going to add the remaining ingredients. So now I'm just adding in a pinch of salt, and that's really going to bring out the flavor of the orange. And we're also going to add in a whole egg plus an egg yolk. So we've got 150 grams of golden caster sugar. We're adding a half uh, tablespoon of corn flour in there. 
and we'll whisk those through with the rest of the ingredients. And then into this we can add our butter, so it's 40 grams going in here. So I've got this on a moderate heat, just stir it with my spatula until the sugar dissolves and the butter melts. So this is going to take a little bit of time, we're going to continue stirring it really gently over a low heat for maybe 15 to 18 minutes until it's really thick uh, and nice and glossy. When you think you're there, just have a look, see how it holds on the, on the spatula. If it kind of coats it really well, looks nice and shiny, then you know you're in a good spot. You just want to pass it through a sieve to remove any of that orange zest and also a little bit of orange flesh that I got in there as well. And then we can just pour it straight in, making sure that we're scraping everything out. And then just scrape everything through, just leaving the bigger pieces behind in the sieve. So now this just needs about 15 minutes or so to cool down slightly before we pop it into our tart case. So now my tart case has had a chance to cool, I'm gonna go ahead and get the curd in there. And then this can go into the fridge and it's gonna need about two hours to set completely. So now it is time to make the chocolate ganache, which is the finishing touch to our tart. So I've got 130 mils of double cream. I'm gonna get that into a pan and get it warming up. I wanna bring it to the point just before it starts to boil. I've got 130 grams, so the same amount of dark chocolate. If you ever think that you maybe don't like dark chocolate, if it's a bit too bitter, don't forget we're adding loads of cream to it, so that will really soften the flavor of it. So my cream's at the point now where it's just starting to boil and pour it straight on top of the chocolate. And then best thing to do is to just leave this to sit for a minute. Let the cream start to melt the chocolate. As soon as you start mixing, it will cool everything down. So I've got my filled tart case with the curd, which has been in the fridge for a couple of hours. That's nice and set. I always find really helpful to use a tin or a can from your pantry to just release the tart. Ganache has now had about a minute to sit. Grab a whisk and give it a good mix up. And just mix from the center here and what you should see is quite quickly you'll have a really smooth, shiny ganache. If you do find that it splits a little bit, you can take a little bit of your ganache, melt it down again and stir it back through and that should bring it back to life. And we need to act quite quickly here because it will start to set when it goes into the tart shell. So the best way to get this filled nice and evenly is to pour everything into the center and just gently spread it from the middle to the edges. And now it's just finishing touches. So we've got that lovely orange that I prepared earlier. I'm just going to sprinkle that over the top, then finishing it with a little bit of flaky sea salt. So now this just needs to go back into the fridge to chill for about 30 minutes, but you can do this in advance. It will keep in the fridge for up to two days. So now my tart has had plenty of time to chill. It's time to cut into it and see if we've got those lovely layers. I'm going to have a taste. I actually can't wait for this one. Mm. That is so lovely. Uh, you can really get the sweet uh, zestiness of the orange curd and then there's the super rich chocolate ganache on top and that pastry is so crumbly. So this is my chocolate and orange tart. This is so good. If you make this for someone, they're going to want you to make it again and again.